John, you're up first today with Coach Pat Hill. Go ahead. Good morning, Coach. Good morning. Yeah, I just, I'm not going to tell you to resign because there's going to be plenty of other people to do that. I just want well, to. Hey, listen, let me, let me answer that one because I'm not going to resign. I've got a contract. I, I, I know. And I'm going to, wait, wait, let me finish, John. I'm, I'm going to live up to my contract. I'm going to work as hard as I can to get this thing done. That's all I got to say about that. Okay, now your question. Okay. I just want to remind you of an interview you had five, maybe six years ago when they asked you about your philosophy of coaching as opposed to that of Boise State. And I remember scheduling? at the time, and let me finish. Okay. I remember at the time. <laughs> You're right. Okay, you go ahead. You made fun of Boise State. You said, well, <clears throat> they don't play anybody. They play these little teams, and they beat up on them. And you, we pay. I said Nebraska that five or six years ago. Now, wait a minute. It, let me finish. <laughs> and I just want to ask you, how is that working for you? Because uh, 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 Boise State is like number four or number five, and you can't even win the whack. So how's your philosophy working? Well, it's not working as well as Boise's. You got that right. Okay, buddy. I, I, I appreciate it. You're right. I'm wrong. You're right. I'm wrong. You got it. And I, you know, and, and I think that philosophy is often misunderstood. Well, wait, let, me, let me finish this, too. Yeah. Is he still on the line? You still there, John? No, I, I think I heard the click. But he's okay, listening, but, but, I'm sure. Good. But here, John, here's the other thing. Our, our, our situation isn't the same as Boise's either as far as from a financial standpoint. Okay, so, so every, every business is different, and, and we play the schedule we do for revenue sources and things of that nature. You know, our ticket prices are, I don't know what our ticket prices are at the stadium, at Boise State they're 65 $60 a ticket, and uh, people are paying that thing because they're winning, and uh, you know, it's all about revenue, and we play the schedule we do because that's what we do, and uh, if I was wrong with it, then I was wrong with it. That's, that's your opinion. My opinion is it's helped us in recruiting. It's helped us in visibility. It's helped us in the, those things. Has it helped us win WAC championships? No. And that, that is the main dilemma. So I, I agree with you there. Uh, Boise State has done an outstanding job. They're the best football program over the last 12 years win-wise. And they have done a great job. And to be compared to them, is a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a tough one for me, you know, because, because we aren't on the same plane as them right now. All right, John, thanks for the phone call. We'll take another one in a second. Coach, I want to tell me if I'm right on this, because this is how I remember it. And I was at a lot of those news conferences where questions like well, that. Well, I, I never said they played a little guy schedule, because if it was six years ago, they were beating our butt then. Yeah. It had to be back in, I don't know when it was. Well, I don't think I said ever said it like he said I said No, and, and, here, and I don't know which particular interview he's talking about, but here's what I remember. People would compare your scheduling to Boise State's, mm -hmm. and what you would say is, you're not scheduling to get to a BCS game. You're scheduling to win a national championship. If you have that perfect season, well, you want no one to be able to take anything well, away from you. I came here, and, and I still have that belief, I, I came here for three things. Mm -hmm. I wanted to change the academic situation of this football program. Right. And we did. Our graduation rates, nobody ever talks about. I, they don't count, I guess. But it's been 85 89% our last two. Mm -hmm. Okay. When I got here, it was 22%. Okay. The next thing I said, I wanted to paint the valley red and include the valley in Fresno State football. I think we've done a good job of that through our recruiting and, and uh, going up and down the valley and campaigning and, and working hard to incorporate this as the Valley's team. Now, I know attendance is down and, and things like that, and, and uh, th there's a lot of different answers and questions to that. And the last thing was I wanted to bring big-time big, big -time football to the Valley. And we, we have done that. We, we've brought big games here. Uh, whenever you turn on TV, every team you see in the prime time games, Fresno State has played in those stadiums, played those teams. It's, it's brought national no notoriety to this city. Now, if, if that was the wrong thing to do, I'm not going to apologize for it because I don't think it was. I think we've, I think we've grown a ton. Ha has it hurt us win-loss-wise? Yeah, overall record. Has it made a difference in winning the WAC? I don't know. I think Boise's made a difference in winning the WAC. Um, it's just like until Oregon won a year ago, nobody won the Pac-10 except SC. You don't ever see anybody win the Big 12 except for uh, Oklahoma and Texas. Mm -hmm. And you might see Okie State sneak in. And one year, Kansas State snuck in. But when Kansas State came here, when we went to Kansas State a year later, we beat them 42-20. to 20, And when they came back here the next year, we couldn't even get 35,000 people in the stands to watch Kansas State. So, you know, there's a lot of different philosophies that go on. I thought that bringing Illinois to town and Wisconsin to town and Cincinnati and those kind of things, I think Thomas Bay and our administration has done a great job getting games here. Well, you know, come. You know, bring big-time football to the Valley. It's come, and, and, and hopefully... Uh, I said it after the Rose Bowl game against UCLA a couple of years ago. I hope some 10 years from now we're not talking about the day we beat UCLA in the Rose Bowl. There's some, been some great things here. Have we done it at the same scale Boise State Summit? Not even close. Not many people have. No. And uh, is that where we want to go? Yeah. And as, as long as I'm here, I'm going to keep trying to get there, get there, get there. Um, 
uh, I know the Fresno State job inside and out. I, I know what entails it. And, and it is for me to know, and, uh, you know, there, there's a lot of things that go on here to, to, to run Fresno State football, which doesn't meet the common eye. I'm the best man for this job. I'm going to get this thing done, you know. And uh, right now we're having a down year. I mean, everybody has a down year. And uh, I'm going to make sure this team gets better. We're, that's my job. That's all That's all I can do. I was not happy with our performance against La Tech. Uh, we, the, the thing that made me unhappy about our performance, I don't think we played with the personality that we usually play with. And that, and that bothered me. We had a week off. We were fresh. We were ready to go. I don't know where we lost. We lost it sometime between Friday's walkthrough and Saturday's performance. And also give credit to La Tech. I think they came in here and played one whale of a game. And when people come into Bulldog Stadium, they play hard now. People play hard in that stadium. And, uh, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm ready to roll. I mean, and uh, who was that last caller? John? That was John, yeah. John. John's right. But I never said it like that about Boise State. I've never been disrespectful to anybody. Oh, yeah, what I recall and, and the is... the funny thing yeah. is when we play in Boise, yeah. all the people come up to me and all their media guys, what do they ask me? I wish Boise State played your schedule. <laughs> and then when I come here, everybody tells me I wish you'd play Boise State's schedule. So, I, you know, I, I don't really know. So the people in Boise, when we're there, you've been there. They yeah. always ask me, well, God dang, I wish we played the teams you guys play. And they're starting to. And they're starting more. to. God yes. love them. That's great. Yes. And, and you know what? I think they deserve to be in a national championship. I agree. They're not, they might not be given that shot, though. I hope, of they, the schedule I hope they get a chance. Yeah. And, that, that's, and that's, that's why you shame. always schedule that way, so people wouldn't be able to take that yeah, opportunity you know, away it's, from it's, it's, yeah. you. Know, the, the, the thing with college football that's different than any other sport, if you coach any other sport, your season's not over till the tournament's over. Right. Now, in this sport, it starts on Memorial Day. It's single elimination. There's only about four or five teams left. Labor Day, you mean. Memorial Day. Uh, yeah, is Labor May. Day. Yeah, yeah, Sorry yeah. about that. Labor no, Day. No, no. It yeah. starts on Labor Day. I didn't want someone looking up what they're doing in May for football. You know, but I mean, no. it, that's the way football is. It's the greatest reality TV show in the world now. And it's, uh, you know, it's, it's funny when you, when, when, you, when you listen to Mac Brown on, on the, uh, one of the talk shows I was listening to yesterday, one of the national talk shows talking about football became irrelevant in Texas this year, midseason. Because, you know, they lost a game. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> high stakes. It's high stakes yep. poker, man. And, um, yeah, you know, but, but but we still, like I watched Georgia. I watched Georgia play New Mexico State. I'm, you know, I'm breaking down that film. That stadium's packed, 92,000. I mean, it, they, 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 they don't care. They, they're they going to watch Georgia. They, they love Georgia. And speaking of, I think you should put some hedges in the south end zone. Maybe one of the other players will get stuck in there sometime. Yeah, that huh? was a good shot, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's take one more call before we take a break. Thomas has been waiting a while. Thomas, sorry for the wait. You're on with Coach Hill. Hi, Coach Hill. What's up, Thomas? I'm not, that's actually not my name, but I'm not going to go by that name just for certain purposes. I was a player that was underneath you, and... Uh, that played for you. So my question goes about um, you are, are the best man for the job when it comes to marketing and basically getting the community involved. But what I have a problem with is your coaching staff and how you go against big schools but don't basically have the right – you're getting out coach. And when I say that, I mean you utilize personnel such as Jeff Grady, who was not a very good quarterback underneath you, but now is your offensive coordinator. And <laughs> how do you go about utilizing people that were not successful underneath you and expecting to beat these big-time schools? Well, you know, I, I, I don't think... Uh, I see, see, obviously you have a bone to pick with me about my offensive coordinator selection. I, I personally think right now my offensive coordinator is doing a great job. I don't think that's a problem. Um, I, 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 think, I don't think you have to be a great player to be a great coach. There's plenty of those all over the country. Um, there, there's guys that are, there's guys that are coaching at a very, very high level that didn't even play college football. So, um, it, it's about leading people and, uh, you know, and, and there are times we do get out coached. Um, you know, I've, I've had a lot of different coaches go through here. Probably when you played, it was a completely different staff than what we have now. Unlike a lot of places that keep the same coaches year after year after year. But, you know, I think that we have a very good coaching staff. There are times we get out coached. There are times that you lose games. Um, we've been very, very blessed here to have a, a good number of people that have come here and coach. And I personally believe in my coaching staff. I believe in my players. And I don't know who you are. You said you played for me. You won't give your name. That's, that's how good a person you are. So I'm just going to say I believed in you when you were here. Uh, I, your I name is. do dispute that your favorite. I can go about the things that you've done from a personal standpoint, but I don't want to be the one that ruins your reputation. So... <laughs> 
Um, let wow. me go ahead and just say that when it comes to what you've done as a coach, honestly, to be true, you've been the worst coach that I've ever, ever played for from high school to Pee Wee from any point. So I'm sorry that you had a bad experience. I'm sorry you had a bad experience. I really am. Did you get well, your degree? You're not. You're not. You're did not you get, true, did you get your not, degree? Oh, I definitely got my degree. Good. Then I'm very, very happy for you. But I did not get it because of you. I got it because I of went you. To, I went, I went to school for myself. That's good. But if, for you as a coach, uh, I believe a coach should know everything about football from every aspect of football. And for you, the only thing that you actually catered to was offensive line. So I do wish you the best. But if I appreciate if Fresno, it. Fresno's looking for an actual coach to win a national championship or to win a whack, it won't be you. It'll okay. be a coach that actually can utilize every aspect of the game and know every principle of the game and apply that to their players. Not just academics, not just okay. getting the community involved, okay. but to actually win a game. And this is one thing I wanted to say. When we played when we played against the big-time schools, we spent the whole summer studying the big-time schools. We watched film on the big-time schools. But one problem we never did was utilize the weeks or any other time to look at teams like Boise or Hawaii or the teams that actually gave us the problem. So I do see fault in your coaching ability okay. when it comes to that. All righty. Well said. All right, Thomas, he's, he's let you say your piece. We need to hit a commercial break, and if Coach wants to say anything else about that, we can no, do that. No, I mean, I mean uh, it's, it's like anything else. Obviously, he had a bad experience, and, and I, I'm, I feel bad about it. He did get his degree, and that's what it's all about, and he did it on his own, and that's great. He'll be very successful in life, and, and that's what it's all about. All right. Welcome back to the Pat Hill Show at Fresno Distributing. Another 20 minutes or so of taking your phone calls at 490-5858 or 800 that, that, that one was a tough call. That's uh, that's hard when they don't give their name. and That was a tough call. That was a tough call. But, yeah, yeah I appreciate it, what he has to say. I mean... Well, you were very patient. And I, I, I wish he, I wish yeah. he would have spoke up when he played, or maybe if we knew who he was, we could see what what he did to help us win. Because back back during those days when we were playing those big opponents, we were winning eleven nine 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 games. I mean, we were winning some games. So maybe he'll contact you on we his didn't, own. We didn't win them all. That's for sure. We never have. No one ever has. All right. Well, no, uh, we had one team, 61. 1961, they won them all here. Well, and, and Stanley Borleski in, uh, in, in 1930 went 8 0. Did he? Okay. Different kind of football so back we, then. So we had two. He, he actually caught one of the first forward passes in college football history when he played at Michigan. I bet you didn't know that. But that's a long, long time ago. You know, ago. In, in the summertime, you know, we never, um, I do know this for a fact, kids can watch whatever film they want in the summertime. But sure. we, we would focus our target on the opening game. I remember one year we really focused on, you know, Tennessee being the opener, and that was an inspiration to get ready to go play in Knoxville and the humidity and the heat. And um, You know, we used, to, we, we used to really emphasize our opening game. I think most people do. But I, I don't think we ever took away from uh, Hawaii and Boise if they were games 7, 8, and 9 for the for the start of the year when we're getting ready to prepare for a team but uh well that's, that's too bad that he feels that way and there's a lot of other people out there that this is this is the time when when you're down this is the time to take your shots so bring it well and and you handled that very well coach i commend you for that and this no, is because all the I, I got great respect for anybody that played whether sure. whether they had a great experience or not because it takes a very special person to play this game and obviously it's it's hard for us to police this but i think it is fair to ask that if you are going to call in you use your real name the coach is using his real name you know who he is, you know who I am, and we should know who you are. Uh, let's go out now to Brian, who called in at 490-5858. Brian, you're on with Coach Hill. Uh, Coach, uh, my name's Brian. Um, <laughs> Hi, Brian. I'm, I'm, uh, I actually sent you a picture this summer, and you signed it for me and, and got it back to me. And not only am I a Bulldog fan, I'm a Pat Hill fan. Oh, okay? Thank you. And i got to say a couple things. Uh, sure. You coach with a lot of honor honesty integrity uh your kids are getting degrees they're going to the nfl you're getting prime time exposure at least five times a year i yeah. see a lot of promise and and uh Derek carr robbie house is a workhorse and and i wish people would just give him a little bit more attention instead of our record because that kid man he works hard I, he's I a warrior that. yeah he is he's the same size as me and I, <laughs> i'm just saying he's a heck of a player uh, and you played with a lack of a safety most of the season. 
Uh, I know our that's safety, been in our there. safeties, our safeties haven't been the problem. I mean, we've had problems and breakdowns at a lot of positions. You know, we've. Yeah. I'm not. Yeah, I, I'm yeah. not going to blame. Hey, our, our problems when when you lose, you lose as a team. You know, we've we've we have not been a a consistent football team. I'm not. I'm not going to blame it on injuries or lack of players. I never will. We're, we, you know, we got enough players to win. We just haven't executed well enough. Yeah. I, I can agree with you, Coach, but it just seemed like a, a lot of big plays have gone that way. Um, and well, that's uh, my personal opinion, of course. But I just wanted to say one thing. And you're not watching the games, right? Because in this last game, there there was none that we got beat in the middle of the field. Okay. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean I'm just I'm just correcting you. I mean, you you, you okay. can say that, but I mean, that's not where where we, where we got beat. So I mean, maybe the dive that went 53 yards. The dive right. that went 53 yards was a big one. We were in man, and we didn't yeah. squeeze it, and yeah. we, we we let the wheel route go. And I mean, I mean, eh, eh, we all share the blame, and I take complete responsibility for all of it. So th- if there's any finger point, it goes directly to me, and that's what I told my team. It's yeah. it's my responsibility to make sure we're in position to win. What do you uh, want to say there, Brian? Coach, but I wasn't I wasn't picking on you there, okay? That's all right. Um, and, and you did correct me, and, and I'm not trying to bring any bad blood at all. I just, I wonder one thing, because it seems like the last two seasons, we just haven't walked on to the field with a lot of swagger like we have in the past. And and can you put your finger on that, Coach? Because it, it just seems like we don't fight as hard. I mean, we... At home, as that, opposed to the road? That, yeah, yeah, especially at home. <laughs> yeah, that's that's, uh, that's sort of puzzling to me. Um, well, last year we were five and one at home, so you know I, I don't know if you can say we didn't walk onto the field with a swagger at home. I mean, we won five out of six. But uh, and the th- one you th- lost this year, played great against Nevada. Th- yep. This year, yeah, last year we were six and two at about this time of the year going into Nevada, and I can remember this. You know, we have a lot of happy people then either, but we walked into that game against Nevada, had it seventeen to seven going in to make it twenty four to seven if we don't get called for a block in the back, and then at the end of the half, instead of kneeing it like a smart coach would do, I went for it so we wouldn't have a bunch of booing and we fumbled yeah, well, the ball. There was a lot so. of controversy there too, coach. <laughs> yeah. The one yeah. time you did, and then the other time you did. So yeah, we, well, I need it. This year at the six-yard line at the end of the half, and the booze just went off. So, you know, I, I just can't be influenced by that. I mean, we just got to do what's smart and what we're supposed to do. But I, I don't think we've had a swagger at home. And I talked to the team about that. I don't think we've had a swagger at home. I think we've played better on the road this year. And and I don't know what to pinpoint it on. Um, we we didn't stay in a hotels last year and the year before, and we won uh, nine and lost two at home. So, this year we're two and three at home. Uh, I, I have a very young team and. Um, I don't know. Once they leave the building at six o'clock Friday night, I don't know where they are till ten o'clock the next morning. I I hope they're. I don't think they're out partying or anything like that. But you know, when you live in uh, apartment complexes where there's a lot of students, who knows if your parents are in town? Who knows? Um, I, I don't know where to pinpoint it on. You know, I'm trying to. I agree with you. I don't think we've played with a swagger at home, and I discussed that with our team. I don't know if it's the environment when we go into the stadium. Um, I don't know. We, we've got names on our jerseys this year, and um, there are a lot of people <laughs> calling kids by names on the sideline and not using very friendly language or terms with them. Um, I don't know if that's it. I don't, I don't know what it is. I, I, I can't pinpoint it, but you're right. We have not played with a swagger at home. Well, and I don't like having n- n- names on the jerseys, uh, especially here. I'd, I'd rather just have, hey, number 91, you're a dog or something like that instead of calling out the kid's name. Because I, I, don't, I don't think that's right in any stadium, especially by the home crowd. I can accept it on the road. Matter of fact, that kind of stuff fires you up. But I don't think it fires you up at home. No. So if there are, you know, and if they want to yell at the head coach and call me names, I'll pull the Mike Gundy deal. You know, I'm a man. I, I don't really care. But, uh, you know, I don't like some of the things I hear coming from the stands directed towards some of our players. And I, and I don't think that's right. Now, do I think that's the reason we don't have a swagger? No. I, I don't know what the reason is, but you are exactly right. I don't think we've played with a swagger at home this year. We played with a swagger at Nebraska. I think, I think we played pretty darn hard at Idaho. I think we played pretty darn hard at Nevada. And uh, we're going to be on the road the next two weeks. We'll see if there is a difference being on the road. But I know on the road we have a lot more controlled time with our players. I know that for sure. Thanks for the call, Brian. Let's get one more in before our last break. Bill, you're on with Coach Hill. Bill, you there? Yeah. All right. I don't hear Bill. Let's try Randall. Yeah. Randall. We have Randall. We'll try to get one of those guys after this break. We're behind on time anyway. Randall, uh, wait 
through the break. We'll get you when we come back with the rest of the Pat Hill Show. Welcome back to the Pat Hill Show on KMJ, the Bulldog Sports Network. Just a few minutes left. We're going to take as many phone calls as we can here uh, before the end of the show. Program brought to you by Wells Fargo Bank. Proud to salute some of Fresno's biggest stars, the Bulldogs. Wells Fargo, together we'll go far. Also by Bud Light, the sure sign of a good time. Here we go. And Table Mountain, what's the next best thing to watching the Bulldogs win? It's catching a star-studded live show at the Valley's Entertainment Destination, Table Mountain. I believe we have Randall. Tried to catch him before the break. We have him now. Randall, sorry about the mix-up. You're on with Coach Hill. Uh, I have several questions. Uh, Coach, uh, you stated that Boise State has more money, that, but the Fresno B and other organizations have reported that it was it's almost an equal the, the, the amount of money being spent. Athle- athletic department budget, yeah. For the for the athletic department. Yeah, but ten years ago, the their budget was half of ours. Why do you keep asking about money? Yeah, I guess I shouldn't. Uh, you're probably right. Shouldn't ask about money. I mean, what does Boise do that's different than what we win? There are there are they significant win. differences that they, they, they win. They win. I mean, that's yeah. the difference right now. They win. They win more than anybody in the country. They 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 win, and and that's who, that is our lightning rod. That's who we are compared to, and that's what we have to compete with, and that's what we're trying to do. And and we're not doing a very good job of it. If that's the answer that you want want me to say, because that's the reality of it right now. We are we are not winning against Boise State, and uh, they're, they're winning. They win every week. I mean, I mean, they win every week. They do. They keep doing it, and, and we don't have time to, to go through all. I the mean, there's no. I mean, there's. I mean, we can talk about other things, but I mean, that's just the reality of it. And that's the bottom line. That's what you're shooting for, like you said, Randall. Thanks for the phone call, Joe. You're on with Pat Hill. Go ahead. Hi. You know, I was never a real big fan of the coach, but after hearing today, i have really my respect for him has really grown. I think he uh, he's accepted responsibility. Which, if you're going to be a coach, that's the one thing you have to teach your your boys all the time. I did play quarterback. I did pitch professionally. So I know that people call in and complain about a past coach who really, and don't name names who really, I don't even want to count. That was hard today. That was really hard because uh, you try to make the experience, you know, you can't make the experience great for everybody, obviously, but, uh, you know, I I feel bad. I'm glad he got his degree and he's, uh, hopefully he's been very successful in life. I do have one concern and I, I was fortunate enough to, you know, be at Miami and be Ohio State when both won uh, championships, and I do have a problem with the coach's style, and that is I think he wants to play anybody, anywhere, anytime, but I think he's so conservative in so many levels, and I think he needs to open up a little bit more, in addition to obviously having some defensive back issues and that sort of thing. I think he really should take this time. He's going to do the kind of soul-searching he seems to be doing today. I think he really ought to take the time to look at being more creative and opening up the field a lot more than he has in the past because I don't think they pull away and I don't think they overwhelm early. And so as a result of that, all he does all he does is allow these other teams to stay even for a while. And when they stay even, it seems to me that they wear us down. And it's been this way for several years. I think if he's going to grow as a coach. He really, and I'm not trying to hate Well, what are, give me some, I mean, I, that all makes sense. Give me some suggestions. Well, again, are you saying are you saying spread offense and option and or no, what, what are you saying? I don't know. What are you saying? Throw the ball down the field more. I'm, I'm being asking. I'm being honest. I mean, just asking. No, no. I I think actually your your passing game is really good. I think you got some good running game. I think what I'm saying is when you get ahead, I don't think you should play conservatively. I think you should stick it down their throat. I think you should keep scoring, 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 scoring. It doesn't matter how many points you have. It doesn't matter how many points they have. And I think what you tend to do, frankly, if you look at a lot of your games, you you do have opportunities to pull away and you don't. And I think that sets a tone for a lot of the lot of the way the other teams perceive you. And I think you again, maybe because you're a you know a, a, a prototype coach, you like to run, you like to believe in a strong line and so on. I don't know if you have the horses, frankly, right now to play that kind of game. I think you need to you need to take some more chances, take greater risk even when you're ahead. That's all. I'm I tell you what, when when we get up by a score, we're always trying to get another one. I tell you, we're not I don't I don't see us pulling back. Maybe we just can't execute. I'd like to get some games that we pull away in. I really would. I agree with you. I mean, I I'd, I'd like to be there. We haven't been in one of those yet this year. 
Well, Joe, thanks for the phone call. Yeah. We're out of time on the Pat Hill Show. Uh, Coach, uh, have a safe trip to Las Cruces. Yeah. I'll see you there. Maybe this is a game where some of the things Joe uh, is talking about are going to happen. We'll find out. I'd, I'd love to have one of those kind of games. I'd love to. It'd be fun to be around. We haven't had one in a long time. He's right. But, you know, we just haven't been in one of those. Well, thanks for being here, Coach. Have a great week of practice. Right. We'll see you there. All right. That's